Oh my. Before we begin today's episode, I would like to give you an update on this marvelous window that I built. You can watch that video right here. In case you didn't know, sometimes I like to play with Arduinos. This is no exception. So I've made a voice activated electric window. But how do I open it? Open. Go, go, gadget window. Chicken burger. <laughs> and now for the episode. In the last episode, I went to Japan and achieved absolutely nothing. And after getting back, I decided to try and build some intercooler pipe work. This involved a lot of chopping pipes, bead rolling pipes, and installing pipes. I then decided to throw away all my intercoolers and use water to air ones instead. And that's about it. Now today's episode might be slightly different to what you're used to. It's gonna be me narrating me doing things to my car while sometimes having a little bit of input from me. That kind of behavior is not approved around here. Now the reasons why Volkswagen decided to cover up these rocker covers with plastic is beyond me. But after you remove them, it means that the crankcase breather is floating around in midair doing nothing. So with a little help from a grommet and a good greasy fingering, this problem is solved. This is the part of the video where I give things back to the community. Volkswagen, in all their wisdom, have decided to use these very fancy custom quick-release fittings on their radiators. And they look like this. They have some weird kind of retaining wire there that you flip up like that, slip it over, and now it's locked in place. As you can see, doesn't exactly play well with typical style radiators. But what can we do about that? Well, this is where taking advantage of engineers' laziness comes into hand. Volkswagen did not design these fittings. And this particular type of fitting is called an NW32. You can see it there. Now this is the female version. This is the male version with a nice little barb fitting on the end for a 40 millimeter radiator hose. Now I have a standard fitting with a 40 millimeter barb fitting. It took me an incredible amount of time to find out this information, so maybe you should do this. Now you might also be asking yourself why I haven't bothered doing the intercooler piping on this side. And this is because people on eBay seem unable to tell the difference with- <sighs> Fuck's sake. Stop! Ah! As you can tell, my voice recognition needs a little bit of work. Anyway, basically I'm waiting on a 45 degree fitting to go there because they sent me a 90. That might help you see it a little bit better. Basically I need a 45 to connect these two pipes. One's a 1.5 inch, the other one's 1.75. And this is what they sent me. Now as you all know in the last episode, we figured out how to do turbo stuff and make the engine hot. But in this episode, we're gonna be bipolar and figure out how to make it all cold again afterwards. That involves lots of playing with cooling systems and with the addition of removing some of these stupid yellow identifier tags. Because seeing as most of the stuff in the engine bay is now plugged in, they're not needed anymore. Now I've decided to fit this brace thing simply because it's there for a reason. A lot of people when they fit big front mount into coolers, which I'm not doing, they get rid of this because it gives you more space between the grill and the actual radiator. But, here's why that's a stupid thing to do. You see how easily that flexes, and that's your bonnet. So basically all that's gonna happen is your bonnet's gonna be constantly doing this, these bolt holes are gonna crack, and everything above it will end up flapping around like it's got problems. So because of that, this is staying. Now rigidity aside, you've got a heap of room there, maybe probably just under four inches there, which is plenty of room for the radiators because they're averaging maybe half to three quarters of an inch thick. 
Now it probably will get a little bit tight in there because I've got an air conditioning radiator as well as the water to air intercoolers that have to have their own radiator. But I may get a small one that just fills one side. So this is most of what I've got to play with. These three are gonna go there. But there's a little bit more to add to this. So on the top, I think is a power steering oil cooler, followed by the automatic transmission cooler. And then below this, I would have thought it would be an engine oil cooler, but for some reason, coolant goes in there. So who knows, secondary radiator. And there's two more things that have to go in there as well. That's an air conditioning condenser. I'm not gonna be using that one because it's absolutely massive and it won't fit in there. And the last thing to go in is extra radiators for these things because they need them. Now you might notice a few things. These lines do not exactly go where I want them to. However, they have these fancy bespoke fittings that are only gonna fit on the other ends of the hoses. So my plan here is gonna be basically chop the lines, flare them and chop them here as well. Then I can run them where I want and connect them with rubber hoses because there aren't any levels of extreme pressure on these. So it'll cope with it just fine. There's also something I can do here to save a bit of space, which is to double stack these radiators. And you might think that's a bad thing for efficiency, but that's how they were from factory, just not on this radiator. This one was on the air conditioning condenser. And I've managed to glean these lovely little brackets from the aircon side. And then all I have to do is through bot these, making sure I don't make any holes in these capillaries here. Maybe this is foreshadowing. Anyway, mounting. Now, thanks to this fancy new tripod I've just got, it allows me to do top-down shots like this, which exposes me to the ridicules of my ever-expanding bald spot. However, bullying aside, these fittings come off quite nicely and make it very easy for me to put the radiator in place. Sadly, this calls for a bracket, a bracket of which a certain YouTube channel would not be proud of. Now the real trouble comes with bolting up the other side because it's extremely difficult to find somewhere to bolt it to. Oh, oh wait, no, the, the factory hole works just fine. Did you really expect anything different? That's two down. Only five more radiators to go. Now I can imagine the comments now. Think of the thermal efficiency. You should never double stack radiators like this. Your engine's gonna overheat. Well, this is what Volkswagen did, so shut up. Bit annoying that that hits on there, but I'm gonna chop these anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Make the noise. Ah! Now, as you can see, everything fits in there really nicely. Loads of clearance. The trouble is gonna come when I'm trying to sort out that water to air intercooler because there's a lot of space here that runs all the way across the top there, but anything below there ends up hitting on that, whatever that cooler is there, the one that clips onto the other one. Power steering, that's the one. Anyway, so it looks like I'm gonna have to get a very long and thin cooler to go in there. And the other thing is there's a pretty big gap there. It's uh up to my second knuckle on that finger there. So you're talking about two to two and a half inches of a gap between this radiator and this one. And that's the space where the air conditioning condenser is gonna go. Hopefully, if I can find one that fits. Now I'm trying my hardest to avoid cutting into this as well as removing this bracing here. 
mostly because I think when you cut this out and have all these intercooler things sticking out here, it looks stupid. And when this car's finished, I want it to look like it came out the factory and is completely unmodified so I can surprise Holden owners. So, radiator's pretty much done. Now I've got to deal with hoses. Let's pretend I said a funny joke about hose, because it sounds like hoses. So this is very slowly starting to come together now. I've notched out here so I can fit these coolant hoses in. And that one is going to go to this hose here with a couple of 90s. Same thing on that side. This one can connect to that. And that's that radiator done. This one goes somewhere else. You might notice I flipped it around. And that's because in all my wisdom I fitted it backwards. But I have to do something to this one because I'm going to flare the ends of that one. Ah, fuck's sake. Stop! Ah! Anyway, this side of the engine bay as well. Um, this one's pretty much almost finished. Got a bit of wiring to do there. All the brackets are done, all the wiring's tucked in there. All the air things. And then I've got the intercooler going here. The only thing I'm waiting on is an adapter so I can fit a map sensor in there. Now Volkswagen originally had it on the end of this silver pipe here. Now the reason I can't use it, whether you can see it or not, is because it's a four pin. Now if it's a three pin, it's fine. It means it's just a pressure sensor or essentially a boost sensor if you're a Neanderthal. Why are you having such a trouble focusing? But anyway, four pin means that it's also got a temperature sensor. And having a temperature before you get to the intercooler is a silly idea because the pressure here is going to be higher than it is there. It's also very annoying because having this pipe just clipped onto the end of there was a really neat solution and I've had to do a lot of messing around to get it to work. But here's how I've done it. So from that bit up there, I've gone down there into a 90, which goes across there and into the turbo. So all I have to do now is find a way to bracket this pipe to this coil cover. Looks marvelous, doesn't it? What's that? Is that a bottle opener? Never mind. Now, aside from that, that's relatively tidy as far as my standards go. I just have to repeat it over here by fitting this massive coolant expansion bottle. And it'll fit. I just have to make a pretty complicated bracket there. And the other things to consider are the heights of the filler points, because I know Volkswagen has a fancy tube that probably costs a million dollars that goes in there to bring your fill point above the highest point of the engine to stop air locks when you're bleeding the coolant system. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be some kind of clusterfuck. But luckily I've got a huge bleed point there, which I'm not going to be using. So that concludes yet another episode. I have to connect about 10 hoses there that I don't have the bits for. Thanks eBay. But what that means is, by the time you're seeing the next episode, I'll have done all those things, and I'll be ready to start it, properly this time, because last time was rubbish.